When you imagine using FreeBSD or a FreeBSD-derived operating system, you imagine that you'll be using the command line a lot. Thanks to GhostBSD, you don't have to. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, first up, we'll install GhostBSD. And this shouldn't involve the command line at all. Everything is fully GUI. And that's a credit to GhostBSD. They're, from the outset, for a long time now, they've had a, a what I consider to be one of the best installers going. It's simple, it's to the point, it's easily understandable. You get a lot of options with languages and stuff. Well, that's a good thing because, you know, at least they're catering for everyone around. But you choose the keyboard layout you want. You click next, choose the time zone, Europe, and then the capital city that you want that represents you, in this case, London. And you want to configure full disk, we do. You click the disk you want, you leave everything else as default if you wish. If you only got one single disk, leave it at a single disk. Click next to leave that. Just put your details in, put your real name if you want to. Then you put your username, which is automatically filled in. You put your password that you want. Try not to forget this, otherwise you won't have access root, but you know, just put a password that you can remember. And just to verify it, and we pass creating a user admin. And press install. And then that's it, it gets on with it. All done. Restart. Taking the USB stick out of the machine. And we'll get into the newly installed GhostBSD. No command line touched. Excellent. So when we say everyday tasks, what do we mean? Well, you know, we're processing, creating files and stuff like that. People, what they do on the computer all the time. We're not talking about coding or anything like that. Just everyday tasks. And one of the tasks is, we've already, there's no updates available, so what bother with that, is to install software. With a lot of people in FreeBSD or think of FreeBSD, they think that you need to get in the command line in built PKG install. But with GhostBSD, you get a nice GUI installer, package installer, as you see. I think if you've used one on uh, Linux, then I think that you'll feel more or less at home with this. You just type in the name, it brings up what it finds. I'm looking for English. There we go. And We'll put one or two other things. So you don't need to touch the command line. Everything is done via a nice presented interface. So we'll put, I don't know, we'll put the GIMP. Because we might want to edit some photographs or create some pictures. We've already got LibreOffice selected if you guys want to do some word processing. And to me, they're everyday tasks. Inkscape, if you want to, uh, again, do a bit of designing. If I want to... Create a YouTube thumbnail for my video. And Thunderbird, if we want to do email. You could use Gmail, of course, via your browser. But if you want a, a more traditional email client, there's uh, Thunderbird amongst others. I mean, I personally use Silphy, but Thunderbird can be a thing. I'm not going to set that up. I'm just going to show that it's available. So once we've selected that and you're happy with what you've chosen, just play, uh, apply. And it should, there's a list of dependencies I think it needs to bring down. It should start going. I'll just fast forward this. And we're all done. And it's already in the menu. Hopefully, he says. There we go. So there's LibreOffice Maps, there's uh, GIMP, Inkscape, Office, you've got LibreOffice. And so they're all done. So you don't need to get in the command line and fiddle around with menu items, which is nice. Same again with print. And it should be just behind there. Yeah, I guess I'll just move it up there. I mean, I remember years back, even having a set printing up on Linux involved you getting into the command line and messing around with uh, HP print, I think it was. I can't remember the actual thing. And for a long time in FreeBSD, you had to get the command line. 
But with GhostBSD, they've got this pretty much set up. There you go. Automatically it finds network printer. I mean, yours might be different, of course. You might not be a network print. You might be one that you physically attach. So, you know. But for me, it's just as easy as going on and finding the network printer. It searches for the drivers. And for mine, it works as generic. So it recommended that. So you guys are default. And PCL laser, again, default. Doesn't get any easier than that. I'm going to select uh, duplexer. And happy with those things there. Yep. And I'm going to print the test page. And there we go. You can't see it, you can't hear it, but it's printing a test page as I speak. So that's pretty cool. All done. And you can change the properties and have a look at the various knickknacks if you want of the newly installed printer. Again, you don't need to go into command line to do it, which is very nice. Right, so we're going to have a look at LibreOffice. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of this, so you know what LibreOffice is. Again, you could use online Google Docs if you wish. A lot of people like that. Uh, I prefer my word processor to be offline, so in the event of the internet not working, at least I've still got me work. And, yeah, it's got a high compatibility with Microsoft Word, so if you need to uh, save or load any documents with that. And there we are. It's like you just type in... Uh, Type in what you want. Hello, GhostBSD. Of course, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to keep the font as it is, keep the style. Just make it bigger. There we go. Oh, Every time I do it, there's always that little uh, apostrophe at the end. Tiny little apostrophe. Always makes me laugh, does that? But yes, it is all good and it works perfectly and there's your Thunderbird if you want to set it up I'm not going to set it up I'm just going to exit out of that but it's there if you need it as is Firefox and because we're our first time we're using it it uh, has this very annoying little Little screen, it's telling you everything you want to do. He's just like, no, no, I just want to, I just want to browse. Hurry up, get out of my way. So I'll start browsing, thank goodness. And it's Firefox, so you have a browser. Everything you might want to do on a daily basis. Again, you see, your your mileage might vary. Some people want to do different things, but basic things. GhostBSD will see you through it. No command line, no scariness, nothing like that. So they are the best uh, YouTube channel in the world. It's all very nice. Done a lot of videos. We 457, 458 with this one. So yes, and it plays full screen and there's no problem whatsoever.
youtube.com forward slash Rob and Nuggie. Well, it's not all plain sailing. There are a few things which we're going to need to do via the command line, unfortunately. One of them is to... Uh, well, let's just say to burn a DVD, either to a DVD or to a USB stick. There doesn't seem to be any way that we can do that via a GUI, which is one of the deficiencies, I think, which is one of the things that maybe Eric can um, see to. I don't know. I don't know how easy it is to write, to write a tool like that. So we've got that, and... Uh, yeah. So anything that requires you to do kind of like writing to D, you know, using DD or anything like that has to be in the command line, which is a shame. So I would say that we can 99% no console is needed, except for that 1% of things like that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, yeah.